Lola is one of the brightest students in school, a true machine for good grades, and of course, someone who takes rules very seriously. On the other hand, Pei, the popular captain of the football team, is a complete opposite. He despises anything that involves rules or responsibilities. One day, Lola finds out that a girl was doing cleaning chores for Pei. This makes her furious. Without hesitation, she heads straight to the football field, where Pei is about to score a glorious goal with the skill of a professional player. She intercepts the ball at the crucial moment and demands that he drop everything to clean the windows immediately. Pei, surprised and unsure of what to do, starts begging. Lola, please let me play. But Lola stands firm as a rock. She holds the ball with determination and walks away, while Pei runs after her, desperate. In a moment of frustration, he calls her a silly brat. Without losing her composure, Lola replies that he's acting like an immature boy, and the argument heats up. In the end, Pei is forced to clean the windows. The girl who had done the chores for him apologizes, clearly embarrassed for getting Pei into trouble. Still irritated, Pei mutters to himself that if Lola were a boy, he would have punched her, and, as if that weren't enough, he provokes her even further, saying she's a boring nerd, and that he doubts any boy has ever had the courage to kiss her. Lola walks away hurt, but Pei won't let it slide, and decides to get revenge with a classic prank. He balances a bucket of water on top of a door, hoping Lola will fall for it. However, to his dismay, it's the teacher who ends up walking through the door, getting soaked. Lola can't hold back her laughter. The teacher, wasting no time, punishes Pei by making him run a hundred laps around the track. Exhausted and defeated, Pei barely manages to complete the punishment. Later, Lola, still holding the ball, approaches and messes up his hair as if he were a little puppy. Her smile is victorious. Pei stares at her with such intensity that it makes Lola nervous for a moment. But in a moment of distraction, she injures herself with a pen on her desk and, of course, blames Pei. He then declares that they are now officially at war. Later, Pei is called into the principal's office. Scared, he begs that his parents not be called. But the principal wants to understand the reason for so much conflict between him and Lola. Pei describes her as too demanding, while the teacher points out that Pei is a terrible student. The principal, in a stroke of genius, decides that the best way to resolve their feud is to make Lola Pei's tutor. They will have to work together to improve his grades, and they even need to sign a mutual assistance certificate every day to ensure they're truly cooperating. From that point on, their relationship becomes a roller coaster of provocations. Despite everything, Pei tries to focus on his studies to escape Lola's constant nagging, but she never lets him off easily. He even tries to sneak off to football practice, but Lola demands he fix his errors in the notes first. Things get even more complicated during gym class, where Pei gets revenge by making Lola run so many laps that she can barely stand. Even exhausted, Lola maintains her composure, while Pei watches from afar, still trying to figure out how to overcome their rivalry. Later, Lola's friends comment on how lucky she is to spend so much time with Pei, the most handsome boy in school, but Lola, with no filter, badmouths him to anyone willing to listen. However, this comes at a cost. Pei's fan club, who forgives no one, decides to confront her. To them, speaking ill of Pei is practically a crime. Lola refuses to apologize, and the girls decide never to be her friends again, marginalizing her. Later, Pei finds her and, with an arrogant attitude, asks what she said to make the girls fall in love with him. Lola reveals that Pei's fan club is bullying her and promises that if he doesn't do his chores, she won't let him play soccer. Pei, furious, grabs her arm tightly. He says that the soccer team is very important to him. And when he doesn't let go, Lola bites his arm and walks away, while Pei promises revenge. The next day, the teacher is about to punish Lola. So she hides in the radio room and is forced to apologize to Pei, who feels proud. When his fans try to bully her, Pei defends her, saying that she's a wonderful girl and his fans calm down. Then he invites everyone to the soccer game and says he has one last gift for his favorite girl. But to Lola's surprise, it's for a friend who promises to take her home all year long. Lola dies of envy. Pei takes her on his bike and she gets so excited that she hugs him tightly. However, Pei has a hidden motive because near Lola's house, he pretends to pass by his house and asks for her math exam to copy. Lola scolds him for being shameless and runs home, but he doesn't let her close the door and they fight. Pei asks to speak to her father, but Lola reveals that he passed away and that she now lives with her uncle, crying in sadness. Pei says that if he doesn't pass the exam, he will be expelled from the soccer team. He studies hard to impress her, using some strange techniques, but what matters is that he gets good grades. Even the teacher congratulates him, and he rubs a success in Lola's face. Later, they see a thief stealing a lady's wallet, and without caring about the danger, Lola calls the police and chases him. Pei helps her, jumping off the bike and returning the wallet to the lady, who is very grateful. However, Pei discovers that his ankle hurts and Lola touches it, making them both shy as they've never been so close before. Later, he gives her a book about birds that she loves, but since her father died, she hasn't been able to buy any. Pei promises to give her a book every year as a form of thanks, and Lola gets so happy that she even goes to see him at a soccer game. 
She loves watching his sweaty body, and when he gets kicked, she gets nervous. He decides to keep playing for the love he has for her and manages to score a goal, which makes her smile, but his injury worsens and he has to get his leg cast. Lola timidly visits him, and his friends laugh because they look like a couple, which makes her embarrassed to speak in front of them, making her run away. Pei becomes the hero of the school, and he finds an apple as a gift, but he doesn't know that it was Lola who left it, staying in the shadows, surprising him. The two receive an award for good behavior, and each time they look at each other, they feel more love, trying to hide it, although Lola's friend notices that Pei likes her. Later, Lola's mother introduces her new boyfriend, with whom she wants to start a family. The man has a son named Remy, who, at first, seems friendly with Lola, but alone, he says that her mother is only interested in his father's money and insults her. Remy doesn't want his father to remarry and says he hates her. The dinner becomes uncomfortable and Lola leaves home sad, finding her friend crying because she thinks she's ugly and that she will never be loved, especially by Pei. Lola consoles her and asks Pei to say nice things to her friend, but he confesses that the only person he wants to be kind to is Lola because she takes his breath away. Nervous, she goes to the bookstore where she finds Remy, who sees her and chases her. Her, Remy provokes her in front of everyone and warns her that he doesn't want her to move into his house because he doesn't want to be her half-brother. Lola doesn't tolerate the insults and confronts him. Remy becomes violent, but Pei arrives to defend his beloved. Lola calls him a psycho, and Pei threatens Remy before taking Lola to a beautiful place where they skip rocks on the water and do couple-like things. She says she's afraid to move in with Remy because he seems crazy, and Pei promises to protect her if he ever attacks her. Lola feels better, but her mother organizes a surprise meeting and officially announces that she's going to marry her boyfriend. Lola and Remy make a sour face, and because it's Lola's birthday, her stepfather gives her a mirror, but it's broken, and she doesn't understand why. Remy reveals that he broke the mirror himself because it symbolizes Lola's broken life. Remy's father scolds him, but he says he will never allow them to be a family. Lola becomes depressed until she gets home and discovers that her friends organized a surprise party for her birthday. Pei gives her binoculars, so she can watch birds, and when she blows out the candles, he tells her to make a wish. Lola wishes to go out with Pei and kiss him every day, but her joy doesn't last long, because Remy waits for her outside school and says that the divorce of his parents is her mother's fault. Lola responds that her mother doesn't love him, and they fight until Pei arrives in time and tells Remy to shut up. Remy asks if Pei is Lola's boyfriend, and Pei, irritated, is about to punch him, but Lola stops him, asking them not to be immature. They exchange challenging looks. Later, Lola gathers her most precious belongings and moves with her mother to her stepfather's house, becoming Remy's half-sister, who pushes her box aside and tells her not to touch his things. She explains that she didn't do it on purpose, but he treats her harshly because he had to switch rooms and threatens to bully her and her mother. Lola feels sad, becoming the center of gossip at school, where everyone speaks ill of her new family. Pei defends her and draws a smile that warms her soul. However, Lola can't find her favorite doll and discovers that Remy threw it in the trash because he found it ugly. She retrieves it with sadness, as it was a gift from her deceased father, and confronts Remy, but quickly calms down because she doesn't want to upset her mother, who seems happy, even though Remy is a jerk. During dinner, Remy intentionally humiliates his mother by saying her food is horrible. This affects her greatly, and Remy's father punishes him. Later, Lola finds a picture of Remy's mother, and he immediately takes it, but Lola comments that his mother wouldn't be proud of him, which makes Remy feel bad. After that, a flu hits the school and everyone starts wearing masks. Lola asks Pei to check her temperature before soccer, and he gets close to her, blowing in her face as if giving her a kiss on the soul. Lola pushes him away and tries to stand firm in front of Pei, who keeps trying to touch her all the time. He even calls her at home, saying he needs her help because he's sick. However, she discovers it's a lie, and Pei asks her to be the helper of his dreams but she hangs up the phone. Her mother asks which boy is calling her, and she almost confesses that it's obvious. Soon after, her cousin Yuli arrives at school, attracting the attention of all the boys. When Yuli's heel gets stuck, Pei is the first to help her, which makes Lola feel jealous because he's so good to Yuli. Moreover, Lola remembers that when they were children, her cousin said she would take everything Lola owned. Lola feels afraid as she realizes that Yuli is in her class. All the girls comment on Yuli's beauty, and Lola watches to see if Pei also likes her, but when she gets distracted, the teacher punishes her, and Yuli looks at her with pride. After that, Lola catches Pei spying on Yuli, and even though she's angry, he continues to watch her in secret. One day, they meet and become friends. This bothers Lola because every time they smile together, it feels like an arrow to her heart, and all the girls at school feel jealous, talking to her about getting revenge on her cousin.
Meanwhile, Pei accompanies Yui to her house and discovers that she lives in a luxurious house, unlike Lola, and wonders why there's such a financial difference between the families. She explains that her family is estranged, and then they go bowling. Since Lola doesn't know how to play, Pei becomes her teacher, taking advantage of the opportunity to touch every part of her body. She gets excited until Yuli appears, and all of Pei's attention goes to her. Lola gets distracted, and when she goes to throw the ball, she slips, and everyone laughs. Yuli approaches Pei again, and Lola, depressed, returns home alone and finds Remy arguing with his mother because she plans to go abroad. Remy, irritated, says that his feelings are never considered and makes a complaint. Later, Remy tears up a photo of his mother, and Lola sees it and picks it up, handing it to him along with a letter saying that he can choose his own family. Her sincerity awakens feelings in him. For the first time, Remy wishes her good morning, which surprises her and fills her with pride. Later, Yuli invites Lola to her birthday party, and to her surprise, Pei seems to find Lola very pretty and gives her more attention than Yuli. This displeases Yuli, who plans an outing to be alone with Pei. But Lola gets lost and Pei, like a knight, finds her and gives her a feather from his favorite bird, which she adores. Pei feels tenderness and lovingly promises Lola that they will return to this place every year to be happy. However, at school, it's different because Yui catches Pei's attention, who can't say no to her. Lola touches the feather Pei gave her and thinks about him until she remembers her deceased father. Her friend consoles her, and Lola feels she needs Pei to be happy. So, her friend suggests a date, and Lola arrives early, trying to tell Pei that she likes him, but she's so nervous that the words don't come out. She gathers her courage, and just as she's about to confess, Yui suddenly appears, and Lola hides the gift she was going to give Pei. Lola feels sad, and a boy hands her a handkerchief, saying that a pretty girl like her shouldn't cry. To her surprise, this boy is Danny, a new student at school who greets Lola, making her feel shy, and Pei feels jealous. Yuli smiles at Danny, who sits next to her, and Pei doesn't like it because he sees Danny as his competition for being the most popular. Pei tries to look smart, but it's Danny who correctly answers the question, and they tell Pei that he needs to study more. Lola is assigned to show Danny around the school, who watches her for so long that it makes her embarrassed. He tells her that she's beautiful, which surprises her because she's never received many compliments, and Danny makes a funny face to make her laugh. She considers him a good boy, and later, Pei plays a soccer match. The ball ends up at Danny's feet. Everyone is sure he doesn't know how to play, but to everyone's surprise, Danny scores an incredible goal, leaving Pei speechless, who now sees him as his enemy and challenges him to a goal-scoring competition. Pei is confident he will win since he's played a lot of soccer, but he doesn't expect Danny to be so good, stopping all the shots Pei makes, until they end up breaking the classroom window with a ball. The guards hear the noise and start chasing them around the school. Like ninjas, they hide under a staircase and manage to evade the guards. Danny is impressed with Pei's skills, who soon finds Lola happy to see her smile again. Pei reminds her that the college entrance exam is approaching. He has little chance of passing, but he starts studying more and improving his grades because he wants to get into the same university as Lola, and she is moved by this gesture of love. Later, she sees Remy arguing with his father because his mother found a new husband, which makes him very angry. Remy's father explains that his mother is almost 50 years old and has the right to remarry. Remy calls his father a coward, and he sets a goal to reunite his parents, but it's almost impossible, and Remy feels super sad. Lola gives him his favorite food to cheer him up. In the final exam, all the students do their best, and Pei is proud of his performance. Everyone celebrates by drinking a lot, except for Yui, whose parents want to send her abroad to study. She tells Pei that she wants to stay with him. Yuli drinks too much, almost vomits, and runs to the bathroom, while some suspicious men enter the women's restroom. Yuli realizes that someone is secretly filming her while she's in the bathroom and runs out scared. She tells Pei everything, who demands that the men delete the video immediately. They laugh at him, and Pei confronts them, but they are stronger and beat him violently, leaving him on the ground, badly injured. The attackers try to kiss Yuli, but Pei, with his last strength, grabs a bottle and hits the leader's head. Pei passes out, and the police arrest him for fracturing the leader's skull. As punishment, he must pay compensation, and a doctor is called to reconstruct the leader's head. Additionally, Pei is imprisoned, spending months in nightmares as he's incarcerated with criminals. His lawyer visits him and says the situation is serious. Pei believes that Yuli can prove his innocence, but she's blackmailed and refuses to testify in Pei's favor, who is convicted of attempted murder and sentenced to a year in prison. While Lola continues with her studies, 
unaware of Pei's fate. She thinks he doesn't love her anymore. She changes her hairstyle and starts going out with other boys who try to win her over, but she can't forget him. She visits Pei's mother, who reveals that her son is in prison. Lola rushes to visit him, but he refuses to visit because he doesn't want her to see him as a criminal. A year passes, and Lola becomes so sad that she falls ill. In the hospital, she murmurs Pei's name, who is finally released from prison. Lola's friend tells Pei that she needs him, and he visits her. Lola is moved and feels her heart come alive. Pei gives her a little doll with his face, so that she always feels protected. After recovering, Lola accompanies Pei to his soccer games and feels in love with him. Pei decides to become a valuable person and looks for a decent job, getting a position at a gas station. He works very hard to prove that he's now a good person and no longer a criminal. However, Pei feels that he's not a good boyfriend for Lola, as she's in college while he earns little money. Lola's friends introduce her to other boys, but none interest her until she meets Kyuzin, her English teacher, who helps her study. Over time, they become friends, and Kyuzin visits her unexpectedly at night, saying he loves spending time with her. He tries to seduce her, but Lola explains that she's not thinking about boys right now. But he insists, inviting her to a romantic dinner, and she accepts. Meanwhile, a customer loses his wallet at the gas station, and Pei's co-worker takes advantage of the situation to accuse him of theft, as he has a criminal record. Pei insists that he didn't steal the wallet and promises to find it, discovering that the culprit was a truck driver. When he tells Lola, she cancels the date with Kyuzin to help Pei, who sincerely thanks her. The three of them search for the wallet, while Kyuzin waits for Lola. Late at night, Pei tells Lola to go home because she has an important test the next day, but she doesn't care about the exam because she doesn't want Pei to be fired and keeps searching until it's very late. The next day, Danny tells Lola that she's in love with Pei. Pei then secretly goes to the depot and finds the wallet, taking it to the gas station. But Pei doesn't show up because he's running errands, and Lola leaves him to take a very important exam. Kyuzin waits for her as if he were her boyfriend, and Pei, jealous, shows up there. Lola says that Kyuzin is just a friend. Then, Pei squeezes her hand so hard that he almost hurts her, and Lola asks him not to be rough. Kyuzin is very kind, and Lola apologizes, and in return, he gets a dinner with her, bringing them even closer. Kyuzin likes Lola and buys her heart-shaped chocolates, but as he leaves, Pei sees him giving them to another girl, and suspects that he's dating two people. Pei spies on him, and warns Lola to be careful, because he's convinced that Kyuzin is a playboy who just wants to hurt her. But she thinks Pei is jealous and doesn't believe him. Kyuzin says he only has eyes for Lola and starts confessing his true feelings, winning her heart, while Pei tries to counterattack by humiliating Kyuzin on the soccer field. Kyuzin responds at the nightclub, showing his incredible dancing skills, leaving everyone surprised. Kyuzin then gains a good reputation and Pei, to impress Lola, decides to enter college and takes the entrance exam, which he thinks went very well. However, at the meeting, the director finds out that Pei was in prison and denies him access to the university, destroying his dreams. Pei curses his life, and Lola encourages him. She is hired by a millionaire company, where the boss is a mystery. Her colleagues say that the boss never shows up until one day Lola discovers that her boss is Remy, her half-brother, who hired her to have her close. To make Lola happy, Remy also hires Pei, who sees this as a new opportunity in life. The three seem to be friends at work, but Remy makes Pei work late and treats him like trash, leaving him exhausted. Even so, Pei saves money and manages to buy a new house, planning to invite Lola to visit it when he receives a call from the hospital, informing him that his mother has cancer. She is hospitalized, and Remy accompanies Lola every day, but complains that they're in a very cheap ward. Suddenly, Lola's mother is transferred to the VIP ward of the hospital, where she receives the best care. Her mother believes that it was Lola who paid for this, Lola doesn't have the money to pay for it and discovers that it was Remy who covered all the expenses to make her happy, which improves their relationship. Later, Pei goes to a banquet where Yuli appears. The joyful atmosphere turns serious because, due to Yuli, Pei went to prison. Yuli confesses that she was blackmailed. Yuli tries to reconcile with Pei, even touching his arm, hinting that they should go to bed, but he pushes her away, saying that his feelings belong to another girl. Yuli gets furious because she has never been rejected before, and Pei decides to take flowers to Lola's mother in the hospital. She sincerely thanks him and says that he should become her daughter's husband, which Pei thinks is a good idea. Meanwhile, Remy feels abdominal pain 
and Lola gives him a medicine that relieves his illness. She discovers that Remy gave the flowers to her mother and thinks that he was responsible. She thanks him, and poor Pei is left looking foolish, but it doesn't matter because Pei helps her with a work project and accompanies her to the hospital, confessing that he was the one who gave the flowers. Lola feels shy, and Pei takes the opportunity to open his heart, confessing that she always comes first before any business, even before his own life. Lola gets so nervous that she swallows hard and tells her friend what happened. Her friend devises a plan to bring them closer. She organizes a double date and tries to make Lola and Pei confess their feelings by playing truth or dare. Pei loses and as a punishment, must say what kind of girl he likes. He reveals that he likes smart, kind girls with a sense of humor and that at the moment, he can only think of Lola because she lights up his life and every second with her is worth it. He's about to confess his love when a girl interrupts and Lola leaves, leaving Pei heartbroken. After that, Pei closes an important deal and gets so excited that he invites Lola on a date, buying her flowers. But Remy finds out and makes Lola work late. Pei waits for hours, but she doesn't show up and his heart sinks. When Lola finally finishes the meeting, she runs to the date. But when she arrives, Pei is no longer there and she feels very bad until she discovers that Pei prepared a surprise for her because he loves her and would be willing to wait for her all his life. Lola doubts his feelings, and Pei realizes that he rejected her in the past, which makes him afraid, but he wants her to know that of all the girls he has met, she is the most important in his life. Then, he asks her to touch his chest and says that it took him seven years to understand that she's the owner of his heart, and now he knows. Pei asks Lola to be his girlfriend, and she in tears accepts and the two embrace with great emotion. Later, they attend a company party, where Lola discovers that Pei leaves little gifts everywhere, which warms her heart. Remy notices and tells Yuli, who, angry, says that she will steal Lola's boyfriend. Lola fights with Yuli because she mistreated Pei in the past, and this time, she's willing to do anything so that Yuli doesn't destroy her relationship with Pei, who picks her up at the exit. Remy sees the two together and feels very envious. Pei feels like kissing her and gets close to her lips, but her friend opens the door and ruins the moment. Lola asks them to continue and with courage, gives Pei a kiss on the cheek, which revives his soul. They're separated by the door, but united by love. Remy tells a joke to Lola, who laughs, and Yui takes the opportunity to tell Pei that Lola is cheating on him. Pei shows up at Lola's work and sees when she suddenly gets dizzy and needs to sit down. Pei accompanies her and gives her food as she's weak and finishes her tasks. The next day, Pei gives her flowers with a love note, and her colleagues comment that she has the best boyfriend. Soon after, Lola receives another gift, this time from Remy, which is a mirror just like the one he gave her years ago. But this time it's not broken because now his love for her is pure, and he confesses that he likes her. Lola ignores him, and when she leaves, she sees a bus with her name on it. Pei shows up dressed as Santa Claus and shouts to the whole world that he's in love with her. Lola asks him to be quiet, but he keeps showing his love to everyone, explaining that only a kiss can silence him. Lola hesitates for a moment and then gives him a beautiful kiss, which brings eternal happiness to Pei. However, when she wakes up, Lola has a nosebleed and doesn't pay attention to her body, thinking it's a small problem. During a meeting, she faints and Remy rushes her to the hospital. Pei gives her affection and she hugs him, feeling safe by his side. However, Lola says that her boss wants to open a company in Beijing, and she was chosen to lead the project, which means she will have to move there. This implies a long-distance relationship, and she's afraid of losing Pei's love. He reassures her, saying that the affection they have for each other can't be separated, not even by millions of kilometers. They lean their heads together and promise true love. Soon after, Lola faints after some tests, and the doctor appears with a very serious expression, informing her that she has leukemia. This is a disease with a high mortality rate, and the doctor explains that Lola has only a 10% chance of survival. Lola feels terrible fear because she's too young to die. Pei calls her, and she, crying, says she doesn't want to see him and hangs up the phone, but he realizes that something is wrong. Lola falls into her mother's arms, who gives her affection while her stepfather fears that she suspects leukemia, so Remy tries to deceive her. Lola feels that the disease is draining her strength, and Remy takes care of her.
Her father discovers that Remy loves Lola and tells him that he must be honest with her. Lola goes to the hospital for chemotherapy, and so that Pei doesn't suspect. She says she's going to work in Beijing. She tries to break up with Pei, but he says he loves her. Lola explains that their relationship has no future, but Pei thinks that's nonsense and hugs her, making her feel even worse because the more she loves him, the harder it is to leave him. To her surprise, Pei says he will go with her on the trip, but she refuses, and they embrace in pain. Lola locks herself in her room and writes a farewell letter to Pei, remembering all the beautiful moments they had together and stating that he was the man of her life. After that, Lola says goodbye to her family and is hospitalized, where the disease makes her feel terrible. She goes to vomit in the bathroom and, horrified, discovers that her hair is falling out, entering into despair. Fortunately, her sister is by her side and helps her regain her composure, and Lola accepts chemotherapy. The days pass, and through the window, she sees birds that remind her of Pei, who is looking for her everywhere. Her mother lies, saying she doesn't know where she is. Pei goes to the lake where they were happy together, and not finding her, he becomes depressed. Later, Lola's mother passes away, and they go to the cemetery to lay flowers and thank the stepfather for making her happy in her last years of life. He joins the hands of the two children and says that now they are alone in the world and must take care of each other. He asks them to please be happy, and Remy agrees, staying by Lola's side for a few years, during which, unfortunately, her condition doesn't improve. The doctors say she urgently needs a bone marrow transplant to save her life. Lola starts painting to relieve her sadness and makes a painting of a feather, which she exhibits. Pei sees the painting and is speechless because it's the same feather he gave Lola years ago. He asks who made the painting and the exhibition director says it's anonymous. Pei waits for hours until Lola appears. They meet and their souls explode. She congratulates him on the success of his travel business, but Pei asks for an explanation as to why she disappeared for so many years. She says she simply got lost, which doesn't convince Pei. She's cruel to him, so that he leaves the past behind, and says that he must face a new life without her. Pei makes a final attempt and mentions the moment of their kiss, and Lola's eyes shine, because she can't hide her love. She says that, of course, she remembers the kiss, but to push him away, she speaks cruelly and states that their relationship is over. Lola feels pain and urgently needs a bone marrow transplant, but unfortunately, there's no donor available, and she begins to say goodbye to her loved ones. First, Lola meets with her friend after a long time and tells her that she's sick. Her friend says she must do the things she never could and, above all, be with the people she loves the most. At that moment, Lola's eyes shine, and her friend asks if that person is Pei. Lola says, of course, it is and runs to him. When Pei sees Lola again, it's as if the entire world regains its color. Life, which had seemed dull and aimless, suddenly makes sense. With tears in her eyes, she apologizes for disappearing, while Pei, unable to hide his emotions, looks at her as if she's the only person in the world. He gently asks if she remembers her biggest dream. At that moment, we flash back to a time when Lola sketched a cabin to watch birds, a place that symbolized peace and freedom. With a glimmer in his eyes, Pei reveals that, during all the time they were apart, he secretly worked on building that cabin just to see her smile again. As they enter the cabin, Lola is surprised to see her painting hanging on the wall. Pei then explains that he bought the painting as soon as he saw it, because he knew it was hers, and he needed something to remind him of her every day. The atmosphere shifts when Pei, now serious, confesses that his heart belongs to her and always will. But Lola, with tears streaming down her face, tries to be realistic. She says there's no future for them, that their lives are destined to go in different directions. Pei, however, refuses to accept this. He pulls her into a tight embrace, as if that hug could keep her in his life forever. He promises he won't let the love of his life slip away and asks her to grow old together with him. Lola's tears flow uncontrollably because deep down, she knows it's impossible. Remy, her half-brother, calls at that moment to check if she's okay. Seizing the opportunity, Lola lies, saying she's in a relationship with him. Hearing this, Pei feels his heart shatter, but he can't stop Lola from leaving, leaving him devastated and heartbroken. Meanwhile, Remy has a serious conversation with his father. He reveals that Lola's mother's greatest wish 
before she died was for her daughter to get married. She asked Remy to fulfill that dream for her. So, Remy does the unexpected. He proposes to Lola. At first, she refuses, but the pain in her body intensifies and the thought of her mother makes her change her mind. She decides to accept Remy's proposal, wanting to honor her mother's wish. Remy prepares everything for the wedding. He fills the house with romantic items, flowers, and soft lights. Lola, in turn, wears the white dress that once belonged to her mother. However, as she looks at herself in the mirror, her nose starts to bleed. It's a clear sign that her time is running out. Overwhelmed by pain and despair, Lola makes a drastic decision. She can't go through with the wedding. Her friend notices her distress, but it's too late. Lola flees, and the first person she seeks is Pei. He's in the middle of a graduation speech, but Lola's world is falling apart. She confronts him, asking where he hit her. Pei, confused, doesn't understand what she means. Then finally, he learns the terrible truth. Lola has leukemia, and for the past four years, she's been distancing herself to spare Pei from the pain of watching her die. He revelation hits Pei like a punch to the gut. He finds Lola's diary and discovers that, all along, she had feelings for him. Filled with determination, Pei declares that he won't let her marry another man. He rushes to the wedding, interrupts everything, and confronts Remy. Their argument is heated, each fighting to prove who loves Lola more. With his heart in his hands, Pei accuses Remy of not truly appreciating Lola. He shouts that she is the love of his life and that nothing will separate them. Desperate, Pei runs to the lake where they shared so many memories together. On the way, he finds Lola's diary again with the feather he gave her years ago. At that moment, he knows they're destined to be together. When he reaches the lake, Pei shouts her name until his lungs can no longer hold the air. The silence is broken by Remy's presence, who appears holding a drawing of a bird. Remy explains that Lola always dreamed of being a bird in her next life, free from everything. Pei, filled with anguish, asks where she is. Remy, with sorrow in his eyes, reveals that Lola disappeared because they couldn't find a bone marrow donor. She didn't want Pei to see her die, preferring that he remembers her full of life. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more Korean recaps here in Uncle Drama.